Right, hello everybody. Welcome to um, Yakuste versus Cyber Knight in the second round of CCL playoffs. We've got Yak with Pro Elves, and he's got a wizard that you can't see, and two babes. Cyber Knight with Bretonians, and actually a pretty nice Bretonian team. He's got loads of blood step, some tacklers. Uh, it's almost tailor made to beat Elves, but of course, he's got AG3 dudes, and Yak has AG4 and 5 dudes and a wizard. So it, even though they're kind of tailor made to beat them, it's still not that easy, is it? And joining me in the booth is Calcium and Purple Chest. Hello! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I do wonder if another big factor is going to be Yak's distaste for rerolls. Yes, he's very, very lean Yak here. He has zero rerolls. He's only got one reroll from the leader. Um, and yeah, Cyber's already made a Kaz. Uh, this, this is going on at the moment, so we're going we're gonna to watch the replay for a bit and then eventually we'll catch up to real time. So already we're seeing him, uh, him put in those elf walls just to stop the elves because there is some agility fives just laughing and dancing through his line. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, Cyber does have a bludge, bludge step sure hands character that could be carrying it, but of course he's got it on a bolt bitch <laughs> and a rookie, a rookie uh, blocker, which of course, you know, he wants to score anyway, doesn't he? Like, so this is fine if he can score on him and get three SPPs, get him on the way to getting guard. This is a is actually a really good player to level if you if you can get the score on him, and if not, he's a great player to get bolted and and then have the shoe hands to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the bolt bitch is a great tradition uh, against the lightning bolt, and it's you see a lot of people do it. I, I don't dislike it. I've done it myself. Um, in my recent game against Seabra, though, he uh, he did exactly the same. He had a lovely ball carrier, didn't pick up on it. Uh, picked up on on Nurgle's Rotter instead, um, and I don't hate that, but I do think you need to keep your your actual ball carrier somewhere near the ball if you're doing that. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and there was a turn where Seabrawl ran his ball carrier sort of 10, 11 spaces away, uh, and hence I was able to monster the ball, and, uh, and his best recovery piece was just completely out of the game. Yeah, uh, they do have a Wiz Hortek. It's just invisible. <laughs> Is that because there's just too many inducements for them all to be listed? Is it? No, it's just it's just a bug that happens because Cyber right. Knight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was pre quite prepared for that to be the answer too, but I hoped there would be a better one. <laughs> so we've got the uh, the high elves doing the withdrawn defence. Yeah. And obviously he's going to put in fouls here because he's got two reserves. No reason not to start fouling. There's. There's no mighty blow on the Pro Elves, so he's already down one player, he's going to foul as much as he can, isn't he? Yeah. Who, who can blame him? I mean, that's... As distasteful as this tactic is, it's a good one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Calcium calling fouling distasteful. Now I've no, seen no, everything. No, no, sorry, no, the withdrawn the defence. Withdrawn oh, right. um, it's, it's sensible, isn't it? It's... Um... It, it's a good thing to do, you know, um, but because you, you're just minimizing blocks against AV7, aren't you? But it's not conducive to a good viewing experience, I guess. No, I mean, it's, sometimes it's good. Like, uh, it, it's I think it's less good with elves in terms of elves could, uh, you know, with a wizard can get up and, and stop the score. Okay. Yeah. Um, I didn't quite understand the blitz on the stand firm piece there, but I guess with wrestle it wasn't as bad. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't seem to have sort of gained very much. No, he could have smashed an armor seven dude, couldn't he? Yeah. Um, and and the thing is, like, yeah, he's he's got the wizard, and the thing is, he's got the reserves to foul, hasn't he? Uh, Cyber's got the reserves to foul, so by running away, you are abandoning it and, and guaranteeing big gang fouls on the LOS, which has made a KO. So. And it just means they have to be. I mean, he's still being careful with his shapes, Cyber, because he's a, he's a very experienced, very good player. But it just means you can be a bit less careful with your shapes. Yeah. And a bit rowdier with how you, you know, do try and get those attacks and get those fouls and, and remove some elves. So it's yeah. a choice, and yeah, I don't hate with pro elves, particularly in their light armor, picking the moment that you really do um, try and attack this offense. Yeah. But I'd still be looking for that moment. Yeah, it does mean less need for heroes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, with the one reroll as well, he's he's almost certainly going to save it and have maybe one big attack this half, isn't he? Yeah, but, yeah exactly. Look, he's wrestled him down, and that's a, that's a really nice player to to get fouled, isn't yep. it? Like, uh, it's not a it's not a uh, it's not a proper dacker. Glorious. No, I won't give in until I'm victorious, and I will defend. Might we even defend. see that reroll preserved for a one turn attempt? Maybe. Oh, he had this guy back here. Who saw this? Not Cyber Knight, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, he's cast him! <laughs> wow. There's a turn of events. He oh, that's disgusting. You know, that is disgusting. Oh, look at that. Rewarded. <laughs> Outrageous. Outrageous. Oh, hey, he's leapt in. He's rolled a one on the dodge. Oh, and he's cast himself! Brilliant. Double one! <laughs> One in the cars. Oh, balls in the crowd. Oh my god. Oh my god, what a throw in. Oh, that's, this is uh, insane. That's livened into this half up quite considerably. So, Yak did come for the ball, got it, lost an elf, but uh, that's not a ball you see the uh, the Bretonians picking up very easily, is it? <sighs> no, it isn't. That is insane. Um, wow. <laughs> I wonder if he just didn't see this guy. Like, yeah. Because we didn't, did we? Um, in the I mean, two did come down that edge in the first turn, and I thought that's interesting, but because Cyber Knight moved everything over to the other side, I, th I thought they weren't relevant, but they were. Yeah. Um, and in the midst of all that, Dujira Dud resub, so thank you very much, Dujira Dud, for staying fantastic for two months. Absolutely glorious. And the stream champ is, uh, is wrestling. Uh, Pep Peppered Biscuit, you know, with the uh, JFW, which I don't know if you, if you know about the JFW or not, but um, that's what all these three these three characters are from, the wrestling, the JFW, um, which we're having our version of WrestleMania this coming weekend. There you go, the main event being Extra Armspot versus Rick Reckless. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so then the, the stream, we have, like, we have a universe with storylines and everything, and then we have random matches for the stream titles. So when Peppered Biscuit enters the JFW, I don't fancy the chances of his first couple of opponents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are Absolutely. you implying that in some way it's fixed, Calcium? Because this is, you know, sporting <laughs> entertainment. This is... Kayfabe, PC, kayfabe. <laughs> Yeah. There isn't a biscuit costume now. <laughs> the event will now be put a biscuit in all the parts. <laughs> oh dear. If he wants to be in, he can obviously be in, yeah. Oh dear. I mean the good thing is, Elp, I can change I can change that picture to anything, can't I? You know? So I can make I can make that mania picture any of the matches. So, there'll also be Gorilla Metal versus Elk Meme in a Korea versus Korea match. So there you go. We're getting rid of the bird, finally. Okay. <laughs> no, there's been snow this morning in London, Elk Meme. Wow. I mean, it hasn't settled, but we have had a few drifting little flakes. <laughs> oh dear. So now he's got his ball carrier to pick it up. So he's recovered quite well, hasn't he, uh, Cyber? Obviously helped by yeah. X defensive, non-defense thing. Yep. I mean, it, for Yak not to have pushed through in case of a misfield there, I think is a dereliction of, uh, of elf duties, but... At least he's, you know, arrested this drive. He's now not over the halfway line with only uh, only three turns left. Yeah. Yeah, he probably should have moved some people safely before doing the uh, Edge 5 stuff, shouldn't he? But, I mean, the defence from Cyber was very good too. So it's, it's not as if it was, you know, just a, oh, God, why didn't he do those three simple things? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Cyber's really good, isn't he? Well, it was really good, except totally missing that guy in the backfield that actually pulled off the much 2D kill shot. You know, yes, I was talking about that. Was that was amazing. <laughs> you know, 
Everyone's allowed a bad turn. I tend to save mine for turn seven. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was a hell of a turn, that turn, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Uphill into cards, and then double one into self cards. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the sort of fun that Blood Bowl gives you. That is the epitome of Blood Bowl, isn't it? It's the... It really is, yeah. That's why when well, people say, why don't you just play chess? Well, that's the, that's the sort of things that can happen that makes Blood Bowl great, isn't it, really? Yeah, because chess when does your... not have chainsaws, basically. Yeah, also true, yeah. Yep. <laughs> and because the Queen's just OP. It's very OP, isn't it, the Queen, yeah. I think they'd rebalance that at some point. <laughs> I absolutely hate the heat, yeah. Too hot or too cold, both bad for me, to be honest. Have they done, a... They've done away with sweater in heat, haven't they? Or toned it down? Uh, they have toned it down, yeah. Yeah. They turn. They torn down all of like the uh, the uh, kind of wild, the wilder kickoff results. Yeah, Blitz, perfect defense. They've turned them down as well, haven't they? So that's pretty cool. I don't know if you've uh, listened to the latest Fumble podcast, Jimmy. I'm, I'm certain you have because it, it, it features you, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, but we talked a little bit there about how technically, uh, if you interpret the new rules as written, and lots of people are doing so, um, you can't use dodge on a Blitz. So whilst I think reducing blitz numbers from your whole team that isn't marked can blitz to just uh, four to six players can uh, move on that turn. I thought that wasn't a huge nerf. The fact that there seems to be quite a lot of skills not available to you on blitz turns because they don't count as team turns. Yes. Um, if it turns out that that's how we all are going to you know, play those rules, that is going to be a big nerf. Yeah. Yeah. Is, isn't that just a bunch of nerds causing trouble by deliberately misreading shit? Yes. Yeah. Well, you say that, you say that, but it's it's uh, it's not because they did that with the rerolls, and now yep. Games Workshop have said no, that's totally intentional. So, well, yeah. yeah. If Games Workshop double down on their stupidity, then there's nothing you can do, is there? <laughs> uh, does any part of you think that won't happen, Kelsey? <laughs> <You're>, yeah. <laughs> not while blitzing, like on a on a blitz uh, kickoff result, uh, BB, on, on a blitz kickoff result. Oh, he goes in with a whiz. And no, I totally bounce. meant to hit myself in the head with a hammer. You know, what I'm a Games Workshop, we do that all the time. <laughs> um, what a bounce for the Edge 5, that was. So he couldn't have asked for anything better there, could he, Yak? Like, that was a dream scatter. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 fetchable with an AG5, and hence it is fetched. <laughs> yep. Now, there is the slight problem that he is running critically low on Ls, um, but if he gets the wind done. Oh, he passed he it over, catch! Oh, that was not. Yeah. Thirty percent intercept. Oh wow! Oh wow! <laughs> that 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 schoolboy error in it. Um, he, he just as we've the we seen the game massively change, it changed again. So that's nice. <laughs> An exciting half of Blood Bowl. Yeah, he's had two wild turns, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. had a wizard into perfect scatter into intercept, and he's had a double uphill into cars into double one self cars. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he could have done because he, uh, there was a, there was another blitzer here, so basically it doesn't matter. It's still a six plus for the reroll, isn't it? I guess he could have blitzed him. Where where's the ball? Is he just, oh, he's bagging it in, isn't he? Of course. Yeah, he's just getting three days. Yeah. So there we are, classic eight turns drive. Yeah, he could have. He wanted to really sacrifice, wanted to but got there. Yeah, he wanted a counter score, though, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, like he, maybe he should have not tried the counter score when it was 30% to get intercepted. Um, but I guess he went. You know, like, the thing is, if he doesn't get intercepted, then he, he bezzes away and it, it's one, he's 1 0 up himself, isn't he? So. Yep. And, you know, if you stay there with the ball, there were so many Bretonians around and so few elves that you had a feeling holding on to it was going to be tricky. But not impossible. Yeah. Um, the other option I quite liked was a, a punt to the near corner, um, but it was still recoverable there because knights are so quick. Yeah. But I had a quick look at that. And it, yeah. I mean, you could have moved someone down on. first and, and passed it to him there, couldn't he? Yeah, I mean, I wondered if there was any piece that could come in and mark that knight. Um, 
but they, it didn't, so that didn't happen. So we are, we got seven elves, which is just about enough, isn't it? Well, he, he could have held onto it, Cornite, by passing it to somebody, to passing it to another elf, couldn't he? And then screening off that elf, basically. That that was his option. When saying hang on to it, he means he could have, hurt, you know, he mean, could have... tried to build a defensive shape to keep it safe for one more turn. Yeah. That's all you needed. Yeah. Also, even if the ball got down, recovery was tricky. Yeah. Yeah, the team colours are nice for the next, aren't they? Yeah. They were, yeah, they were, they were, uh, they were all around here. But you know, he could have, he could have come out and passed it to them. Like that, that's what I quite liked. If you're not trying, like that takes away the intercept chance, right? He could have come in here, come out there, passed it over the other side of the pitch, and like you know, had them screened off. Yep. But instead, he went past over the over the intercept. But then it's thirty percent to get intercepted. But you know, if you don't get intercepted, then you can count the score, can't you? So would have been enormous. Instead, he's one nil down. Uh, he does have eight elves back. Yeah. So it's going to be a really interesting second half. Still with that one reroll, he's nursing. Yeah. I think it wasn't. I don't think it was bad to do what he did. To be honest, because yeah, okay, you might get intercepted, but. You can't, you can't stop the intercept because it's a six anyway, and there were. There were I'd have teams. to have a long look at that turn's position to decide if I would have done the same. But it's, I mean, as you say, it's it's thirty percent to be one nil down, but seventy percent to be one nil up and probably win the game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and after sometimes you've got to take those chances, see what happens. Yeah, after you've stuck in your wizard, which is eighty-four percent to work anyway, isn't it? You know, once you've stuck in your wizard, then yep. you might think, fuck it, seventy percent. We just win, and if he goes one nil up and then receiving, then he goes two nil up pretty easily, and and then he's he's looking like he's won for sure, then isn't it? So yeah, very hard. Even with this few pro elves, very very hard to stop them two turning if they really set their mind to it. Yeah. Whereas now he's got to stall a bit, hasn't he? And it's going to be a bit tricky for him. It's a horrible prospect for the pro elves here stalling, isn't it? Because they're just going to get banged on every turn. You stall is an extra turn. You suck up a mighty blow tackle. Yep. Yeah, the reason Satterfield is that he, he sacked his rerolls against Garion to get a wizard, which I thought was the wrong decision. Um, but he won the game. So it looked right. But I think he shouldn't have done that. Why does the throw have wrestle? Because Yak really, really likes wrestle. And it's worked out well with the Adj actually, hasn't it? Adj with wrestle is pretty good. Now, there's only really two plans that would appeal to me here, and that didn't really seem to be either. Um, the first is the withdrawn offense. You, you pull back a bit, try and suck them in and find some space around the edges. Um, and the other is the very quick attempt to score and then see if you can get a you know a kickoff event that really helps or something like that. And this doesn't really seem to be um, one or the other. So yeah, it's gone interesting for to see what he tries to do next turn. He's gone for the strat of how many players can get punched. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> he might find the answers really quite a lot. That's a good question, Peppered Biscuit. Um, I guess my favourite one to play is <laughs> Dwarves versus Halflings or something. <laughs> something where I just get to smash something to pieces easily. <laughs> Jimmy versus a mouse, for example. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jim versus Mouse. Um, casting not lizard man mirrors and not Kemri mirrors. Just not mirrors in general, I guess. Yeah, mirrors are not good for casting. Nor mm. playing, usually. Yeah, true. Okay, I don't know so if there's anything more satisfying. Point. Sorry, sorry, PC. That's right. Oh. Well, he's going to score. Yep. 
Yeah, yeah, today. <laughs> today, casting the mirror was amazing. <laughs> but it was less to do what was, with what was happening on the pitch, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, okay, my, my favourite match to cast is Kemri. Uh, Binkit's Kemri versus I Got This Is Kemri. <laughs> if I could do that every day, <laughs> that'd be pretty amazing. Oh, dear. Right, so Yak's gone for the, uh, the quick score. Still got his re-roll. Does. When nearly but caught no to real time. So now he's trying to uh, turn over 11 Bretonians with 8 elves and no wizard. Yeah. Really needs a good kickoff result here, doesn't he? He needs some nuffle love, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the quick score seemed like the right thing to do for me, though. I don't know if you guys agree or disagree. I, I absolutely agree. I don't think pro elves are an overtime team. I think by the time we reach overtime, there's not going to be a lot of pro elves left. Yeah. So I think you either win in normal time or you just die slowly. Yeah, he's got three tacklers, hasn't he? And a very mobile yeah. team. He's got the yeah. It's a it's a beautiful anti guard anti elf team. This this Bretonian build. Yeah, it is. Which they're very good at anyway. Yeah, the chaos, the chaos versus chaos is pretty fun. Yeah. Is there any better game than bashing up high TV dwarves with high TV chaos? Oh yeah. I'm sorry, there's little more satisfying than that. Watching yeah. dwarf coaches cry. <laughs> oh yeah. Claw horns, claw the dwarf, claw the dwarfs, claw the orc. <laughs> claw DMU, them DMU, DMU, DMU. <laughs> Played into one of my key prejudices there, Calcium, which is the <laughs> chaos coaches are the biggest pixel huggers, and they always assume because they cry when their players die that everyone else does too. Oh yeah, we're we're the biggest crybabies of the lot, us chaos coaches, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. I genuinely couldn't give a flying fuck for any of my pieces. They're just that. They're just pieces in a game. I actually alluded to that when we were commentating on your game um, the other day. Uh, I said that you probably you probably care less about pixels than anyone that's ever played Blood Bowl ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. I'm, I'm certainly not particularly pixel huggy. I think that is a fair comment. Yes. I guess I'm. I guess I'm. In game, you know, you do try to protect your key players and sure. and whatnot. But when a player dies, yeah, you 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 sort yeah. of mourn for about ten seconds in your head, don't you? And then you think he died. You know that that's blood bowl, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, it's over. so Move on. yeah, yeah. It's um, I mean, I, I, I don't think I'm casual with my player players, but I'll certainly throw them under the bus if I think it helps the team's needs. Sometimes, sometimes you've got to be brave, haven't you? With yeah. you know, you, you've got to be brave. You've got to throw key players in the mix, um, and if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. At least they've got an honourable death, you know. So yeah, I mean, base claw sometimes. Yeah. I mean, very rarely if you can avoid it, but there are turns where you need that player to be based. So yeah, yeah. we'll just do it. Screw your, screw your courage to the sticking point, and it will not fail. And, and yeah, I mean, the, the thing with the thing with. You know, claw palm coaches being pixel hookers. The thing is, like, at high TV, you're either the hammer or the nail, aren't you? And yep. if you if you don't like being the nail, then you gravitate towards being the hammer. So it makes perfect sense in that regard. WTF Murray BB Chalice is the end of season. So in the CCL, the seasons last currently seven weeks. At the end of those seven weeks, the admins concoct a method by which the people they like gets to be... Uh, sorry, the top 64 teams uh, get to qualify for a knockout competition called the Chalice. And at the end of it, one team is crowned the champion of the Chalice for that season, which is the CCL sort of finals. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that, that is very true, Villa Helpy. Yeah, that's one of the things that I, I... That is one of the things that I like about... Dwarves is that if any dwarf dies, you just don't give a shit. I'm gonna find everyone that plays Nords in real life and just beat whereas, them to within an inch of their fucking life. <laughs> whereas, if you are, uh, yeah, if if a claw pommer dies, then it's a long road to replace him, isn't it? And your team's a lot worse without him. Yeah. The whole world celebrates. Yeah, if two claw pommers die in two your last two league games, it's really bad. Yeah. If three floor pommers <gasps> die in one league game, it's really bad. <laughs> yeah. And yet, still not quite enough. But yes. 
<laughs> well, dwarves fall under the same category as elves. They're, you know, especially sort of um, rookie one skill dwarves. They're so recoverable, aren't they? You know, it's like losing a war dancer on a wood elf team. Um, it really doesn't matter that much because you know within a game or two you're going to have another skilled up war dancer. You know, so whereas you lose a claw pommer on a chaos team, Nurgle team, um, Chorf team, it's pretty catastrophic. Well, you should have five, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd want six claw pommers on a, on a Chorf team because I wouldn't use a Minotaur. If I had a Minotaur, I'd want seven. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Right, we're live now. We're in the thinking's time now. <laughs> the replays are really nice, aren't they? The way they go fast, and then it's not so good when you've got to watch people think. <laughs> like, it's okay if it's something interesting so you can talk about it, but... Uh... I mean, here, it's, it's what the hell do I do with these very, very few elves? Yeah, it's rough for me now, isn't it? Very tough position. Yeah, even stopping it would be hard, like to get yep. over time and get the ball back. I, I guess that's his only hope. That's why I didn't mind trying to stall rather than going for the quick, quick score because you're just not going to get a good chance to turn him over without a wizard. So you're pretty much just somehow trying to stop him scoring and get to overtime anyway. Yeah, it's why I, I didn't love the wizard. Um, it then looked like it was going to work out okay, but I thought it was a little optimistic at the time. Yeah, that's the thing. For it to work, you've got to get the 84% for it to work. Then you've got to hope for a, a bounce that isn't that bad. And then you've got to get in, roll all the dice to get it, and then survive the 30% intercept. <laughs> uh, yeah. But it's a big swing if you do it. It's a big swing if you do it. But then on the other hand, if you just accept that you 1-0 down, and then you get to 1-1 one, one like this, then you've still got the wizard, and you then you could you, you do the wizard in the second half. So I think it was probably better to save it for the second half. But, you know, fair enough, isn't it? He went for it and it, it could have worked. Yeah, he took his shot. It wasn't a bad shot. He may not get a better one, so... Yeah. It's easy to say when it hasn't worked, but... Yeah, we've focused a lot on that 30% where the interception happened. As I said before, you know, the 70% where it doesn't, and as you pointed out, that elf is then gone with the ball, and it's 1-0 at the half in the other direction. Yeah. So, I mean, it definitely wasn't, you know, shit and wrong. It was just... I perhaps would have thought I'm not sure this works and I can he still doesn't I can hold feel it great though, does it? Overtime. it doesn't feel great giving him no. that intercept opportunity you know um, yeah. it just doesn't feel great no it was definitely more one of those not what I would have done situations <laughs> whereas sometimes things are shit and wrong aren't they yeah <laughs> yeah exactly it was one off from 2-0 yeah exactly Certainly haven't hated the way Yaks played. Um, he, you know, he sort of changed his mind with the withdrawn offence, didn't he? Um, somewhat, you know. And I think the fact that um, Cyber Knight left him a ball sack attempt really committed him, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, he was caught betwixt and between then, wasn't he, somewhat? And again, as we said, or as I said in Purple Chess game, I think if you play like that, you know, where you, you commit a little bit to one strategy or another... It, it normally ends pretty badly. Yeah, it can do, yeah. Right, I'm going to go and get a cup of tea, so I shall be right back. Yeah, um, some things will happen. I, I'm just, I'm so used to the replay pace now. This is, um, that's a big removal. It is. Huge. It is. It's another problem with the high elves and the pro elves is their their lack of innate block and those blitzer pieces that can skill up into absolute monsters. So to lose one of two is uh, is very big. Yeah. But then to lose any pro elf at this point is very big. We are so low on um numbers that um really can't afford any of them to go missing. It takes a degree of commitment to build a pro elf team because pro elves are yeah without a doubt the worst rookie elf team out there aren't they oh, you know 100 percent. yeah yeah so i admire anyone that has the commitment and the drive to actually build let's be fair a really nice pro elf team like this you yep. know with a winning with a really good winning record as well um you know i think that's testament to the skill of the coach in question yeah i, I think i could agree with that it's you know 
pro elves are tough to get even up to this size. Um, I found on Fumble, where I coach them quite a bit, that sort of 15, 1600 is fairly sustainable. Once you start going above that, you're going to get just destroyed in some games. Yeah. Of course, the one thing they do at their advantage is they are quite cost effective with 60k linemen, and even the positionals aren't that expensive. But. Uh, yeah, sometimes that little 10k discount doesn't feel like quite enough to balance it against the stronger elf races. Little bit fortunate armor six held there, so he may get another opportunity here. Depending on how Cyber Knight sets his defense. Yes, and where it goes in the first place. It's yeah. easy to see what his plan is here for yeah. making the ball so. Yeah. And then why even bother if someone can just do red dice you and it's all going to be fine. So hmm. Just need to get Rick in doing the coaching for you. <laughs> So, Peppered Biscuit, if you played a lot of Blood Bowl in general, are you pretty new to Blood Bowl? Um, if you are pretty new to Blood Bowl, I think you've bought yourself a couple of lessons with Jim. <laughs> so... And you can do a lot worse than being coached by Jimmy Fantastic, that's for sure. Other coaches are available. Um, it's, it's interesting, this. I don't... I don't see a route for the elves right now. I mean, that said, Yak does need to get this ball forwards, but there's just too few of them, isn't there, surely? Yeah. Probably got a big minus 2D um, cage-breaking jump shot coming up. Yeah, that doesn't seem a good reason not to at least try it, but I'm not bullish about its prospects. Probably the best option, Peppered Biscuit. Uh, the best way to enjoy Blood Bowl is probably not to play Blood Bowl and just watch Blood Bowl. <laughs> I disagree, but I'm aware it's very um, hip to criticise the game that personally I love. It is very, you know, we are very quick to criticise Blood Bowl, but like you, PC, I've been playing this for decades now, not, not years. It's a good few decades. Uh, I think 1991. I discovered this game back in second ed. So, wrestle works. Yep. Now it's ball recovery time, <laughs> which <laughs> looks a bit rough. It does a little, doesn't it? Yeah, obviously the sidestepper is stopping the ball chain. He is, he'll be back soon. That helps. <laughs> T-Man Taylor, born in 91. Holy cow. Yes, Purple Goo is, oof, I mean, I'd put him in the top five Blood Bowl players I've ever seen play across all team values, all races. I'm particularly good at NAF style, but pretty good across the board. Uh, Purple Goo is an absolute legend. Yeah! 
Well, that's prejudice, Paulie. Uh, you don't want to go believing everything that someone with my accent says, or you'll end up broke. Uh, whereas, yeah, calcium's good old salt of the earth. He's a man of the people. God bless you. And yeah, Purple Goo, uh, a human being has no right to be as good at Blood Bowl as Purple Goo is. Um, he's right. insanely good. He's very, very good. Insanely good. And uh, we just, um, so, uh, sorry, I was muted because I had kids wandering around. But um, Yak, once again, does the difficult stuff and then fails a dodge. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. That ball needs fetching, though, because a ball on the ground, even with this few elves, is an elf ball. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Martin, um, I mute frequently due to the amount of kids I have wandering around at any given time. Ah, so he was, and I, yeah, I think I think you're probably about right. I think there's a lot of middle-aged guys that play Blood Bowl, isn't there? Given the fact that it's been around for three decades. Yeah, yeah. I mean, slightly longer. It was mid '80s, so we're on for sort of 35 years now, aren't we? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, oh God. I mean, that said, there is some new blood coming in, and hopefully, Blood Bowl three will bring us even more. Uh, Gremers, I'm almost halfway to double digits. <laughs> right. Average age of a Blood Bowl player is 29, isn't it? If so I've heard. Yeah. Shit, that sucks. <laughs> if we all go by uh, Dior's, Dior's ageing system where, where he remains 29 forever. <laughs> yes. And I'm apparently older than everyone that's ever lived. <laughs> Even fine. Yes, even Fatin. I am actually a couple of years older than Fatin. I just have PC. I feel like saying I feel like saying hold my beer, PC, when you say that. You know, so. <laughs> I just have a much younger attitude. Um, I'm less mature. Yeah. Right. Sorry, there. Who, who are you calling a bell curve, Tony? I'm eating some food, so. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, red dice sacks aren't as bad as everyone says they are, Valleyhopia. I mean, if you look at the actual maths on it, it's it's not as terrible as you feel it should be, unfortunately. Because there's only six sizes on a dice. So the odds of getting two nice ones on two dice are much better than people realise. Um, Satterfield saying that Blood Bowl 3 will be all new blood. Yeah, until they realise that they waste an hour of their life in an unwinnable game due to dice, and then it will just be us old bastards playing it. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, there'll be a surge of new players, and some will stick, but the vast majority will not. It's a very difficult game, and it's, uh, it's very hard on people's personal morale. Did he um, not pass it to the guy? He just passed it past him. Punted, didn't he? Hmm. But he had a receiver. He could have just had the ball on. Interesting. That would have been really good if the Agi 5 was in scoring range, wouldn't it? The punt, having two scoring threats there would have been amazing. I know he couldn't get that guy into... So, yeah, I wouldn't have hated passing to the catcher and, you know, in Blodge we trust. I know it's against yeah. tackle, but... Yeah, it seems weird because... Sidestep as well. Um... Yeah. Yeah. There's been a lot of this this game, hasn't there? With Yak making decisions that we don't hate, but we don't love, you know? And that's that's the beauty of Blood Bowl, isn't it? There, there is so many different ways to achieve your goals, you know? And the old adage, isn't it? Who's to say if we're right or wrong? <laughs> yep. Friggin' Armour 6 holding up, that's disgusting. Honestly, a break there would have been glorious, wouldn't it? Now Cyber Knight's in trouble. Yeah, I guess it guarantees it's not in a tackle zone and it guarantees that he can't have the ball himself, so... It is rather gambling on not getting your armour broke. 
But now it looks great, doesn't it? I know it's dive and tackle there, but it's not so attractive against Agi 5, is it? Absolutely not, no. To the point where you want to foul him if you can. Yeah, yeah. And even with a movement 8 blitzer, maybe maybe that's the play. The movement 8 blitzer fouls him. I, like, think that's exact, you... I think that's exactly the play, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're just looking at a loss if you don't. It's a 3 plus and then a 2 plus to win. 3 2 2. Just, you lose on a 3 2 2. Yeah. No re rolls. So I think you're fouling. Yep. Oh, yeah, leap. Yeah, leap out. Yeah, so 2 2 2. But he's put, put the foul in. Hey, yeah, you have leap. Yeah, against tackle and down tackle. Yeah, just leap. It does not. I think it does in Blood Bowl 3. Like Blood Bowl 2020. But yeah. If he didn't have if he didn't have tackle, the three plus with with dodge would have been better, wouldn't it? But yeah, with tackle, just leap. Wow, I think the vamp changes in Blood Bowl 2020 are um, lazy, I guess, because they didn't want to put in, it's, I don't know, not really a cash grab, is it? But they just didn't want to put in a, a new version of uh, Bloodlust. So they just completely fucked them by giving them animal savagery. So I'm sure when they bring out the spike, it will have improved uh you know they'll, they'll have bloodlust and they'll be much improved but until they get the spike they're going to be fucking horrendous with uh with animal savagery like basically unplayable so yeah kind of hate them right now yeah exactly so i tell them yeah and also they'd have to think about it and do it wouldn't they whereas now they can put off Thinking about what the bloodless route's going to be. <laughs> and they don't have to make it now, do they? Has PC gone somewhere? I think he must have. Mm. Had time to beat in a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he's done the pass. He's cyber cyber knight's going for the late win here, isn't he? Oh yeah. Yeah. You can hand off to this uh peasant. Yep. Yeah. Might work. Oh, he died and had six blitzer has <laughs> been cast. Oh god. Massive Yak is massive wrecked. injury there. Yeah. Yuck is wrecked. <laughs> He's done it. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> yeah, Hypno Gaze is a lot better, actually, yeah. So. God, I'm going to miss Brett's in Blood Bowl 3. <laughs> hello? Hello? And Jack here. Ah, hello, Jack. Yeah. Or were you casting another match? Um, I'm going to play some games now. <laughs> After all of this amazing... The amazing... Uh, the amazing donations from... Uh, Peppered Biscuit. Has convinced me to play Halflings. <laughs> oh, you playing Halflings? Like, I'm not gonna lose that. <laughs> yeah, my chops are on standby. <laughs> <laughs> you motherfucker! Like, <laughs> him. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Thanks more than that. If if I can get some 
some insights out here uh, because it, it always helps to after a match say say la what do you think uh, it, i i made a mistake when when I, after using the wizard because i didn't cause the five plus for the interception w was there something odd that i did there because i didn't f feel like doing the best thing i could do yeah so i mean i i didn't like using the wizard at all that turn um, because you had to get the 84% for it to work, and then you had to get a somewhat recoverable uh, bounce, and then you had to you had to throw over the, the blitzer, didn't you? So, so whatever happens, you've got you you've got the you know the you're only 70% for your play to work after the wizard. So even regard, disregarding all of the other rolls, you're topping out at like 60% ish for everything to work out, and if you fail, he scores. So. I didn't. I, w I think I would have just held it off for the second half. Um, I think once you've used the wizard and you've recovered it, you could have like, you know, put your other players in a screen so you could have passed to them without having the thirty percent. But then, of course, you can't score yourself. So I think once you've once you've used the wizard and you've got the ball, then it's okay to pass over the head of the blitzer, I guess, because what else are you going to do? You know, you. Well, you're, you're committed to... then, aren't you? You're committed yeah. at that point. You know, you it's not like you, you, you you've pulled the trigger, so you've got to you've got to see it through. But yeah, I did wonder whether you just missed um, uh, the catch on the blitz. And to be honest, because you were in such a train of thought, it, you know, we've all done it, haven't we? We've missed the diving tackle or we've missed the catch or we've missed, a, you know, another skill. So, yeah, easily done. No, I, I, I didn't miss the catch that what I did miss is that I, I, when I started to play, when I pulled the trigger, I was assuming my odds with the catch topping at 60% as Jim said. But then, when I was decided whether to make two or, or, or one DFIs, I noticed that I could make the interception through only one catch. And I forgot to place, to base that catcher. Because I had a, an available blitzer to base that catcher and turn the... Is it a six plus anyway, or yeah, six plus anyway? Sorry. It's it's it is a six yeah. plus anyway. So okay, so so then then I I, I, I was all all confused. So yeah, yeah, I was I pulled the trigger knowing that that that, that I was topping at, at that percentage, and and after that because I was in range and and I could get out of range. So and I'm a gambler. <laughs> yeah. If if I don't do that, I will lose my uh, um, toughly and 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 hardworking earned reputation of being a madman. So <laughs> I really need to do that, and that's why you have these two hands plus agility player placed backfield three squares from where your opponent where you think your opponent will be with the ball. Your opponent places himself there with the ball, so he's daring you to do what you were. Uh, bluffing to do so I, I don't bluff <laughs> yeah that was incredible uh, and, uh, and 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 if the, the pass goes through and I, I think he cannot stop me from scoring because the catcher just run just, just runs uh, out of range but but uh, but yeah I, I guess that being but, uh, the, the injuries were also something that triggered me because I, I was seeing him very high rolling me with injuries I, I you know, I bought two babes, right, Jim? Yeah. <laughs> I bought yeah. two babes, and maths tell me that KOs happen 25% of the time, and injuries 16% of the time, more or less. Yeah. But I had one KO and six injuries. <laughs> yeah, I do prefer the, the Apo, though, because you can use the Apo on the KO as well, can't you? And then keeping that on, you know, even with, like, I know with the two babes you're probably getting back, but you're keeping him on for, like, the rest of the drive can be huge, can't it? And you can use it on a, on a, on a Kaz if the Kaz happens as well. So I do generally prefer going for an Apo than two babes. See, I absolutely disagree. I, I prefer the I prefer the babes all day. I think the babes was the right choice. Unfortunately, Nuffle decided that it was going to be the wrong outcome. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, on another I'm, I'm... day, you've got a bunch of KOs to, you know, and you've got, you're filled in nine, ten elves in the second half, thanks to babes. I mean, the, I, I, I do sort of agree with Jimmy personally, but then I tend to coach higher armor things, and I think the higher the armor, the better value you get out of the pots. I think uh, at I, AV7, babes really do come into the equation a lot more. Yeah, that's fair. I love my Armor Valley 7 uh, two babes in overtime format because overtime yeah. multiplies the effect yeah. of the babes. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Server Knight, for the, for, for the match. The, be the, the better coach won the match. So, oh, no, so I thought it's, there was a cracking game. Sport. I thought both of you played very well at yeah. times. I thought yeah. there wasn't much. I mean, you know, we were talking about other stuff as well, but there was 
you know, I, I didn't think there was much. I thought, what the hell's going on there? Yeah, there was nothing um, between the two of you. Nothing at all. I'll be um, honest, Yak, I think you lost this game last round. Uh, um, but but in general, the, Cyber Knight is better cut than me. I, I can, cutting there, maybe I, I was picking in this match and Cyber Knight was, was lowering uh, in this match. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I mean, he had a, a beautiful anti-elf team, uh, and he coached it very well. Um, and obviously, you had an elf team that really wasn't going to stand up well to an anti-elf team. Yeah, 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 it was an expected result. I, I, I can't imagine how exciting, because I was super excited with, with the last foul from Cyber Knight. That moment <laughs> was mm. huge, because it was uh, 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus to score, uh, if that. But, but the armor value 6 was, was so unreliable. Now, I was I was wifed away. I don't know if you've talked about the uh, the pass over the uh, the knight that intercepted. We did, and what a yeah. game winning opportunity that was. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, we did talk about it. And and you know, right. at the end of the day, there was a good point that someone made about like with with pro elves, you're going to lose players. So yeah. you know, if if you hold off for the second half, you might not get another chance. So yeah, yeah. although it was topping out at sixty percent ish. Yeah, why not go for it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it if that pass had sailed over the knight's head, then probably the game was in a really good position for you. So I, I didn't hate it. I'm not sure I'd have done it, but I certainly didn't hate it. There was no point in that game where we were saying, God, that's awful. What is going on? What's happening? You know, <laughs> so that's testament to both coaches. No, I mean, it was, as you said, Yak, it was a, a tough game for you. And, you know, you came into it in a position where it looked like a loss. Um, and I'm not sure what else you could have done to, to you know, that you didn't try. I, I didn't mind... You know, pulling back on your defense and then trying to wait with that one re-roll and the whiz for that, that key turn. Uh, you snuck someone around the back, he seemed to turn the misplace, and that got you the, the two reds, which worked. Yeah. Uh, the leap in, I thought, was the right thing to do. It just, Nuffle said no. I mean, I thought it was all really nicely done. It just, as you said, you were in a tough spot. You tried everything you knew how to do with that team, but it, it just wasn't ever quite likely to be enough without some Nuffle intervention, was it? Another beautiful match of Blood Bowl. So thank you very much uh, for the casting and thank you very much to Cyber Knight for the match. And they're all beautiful, Yak. Yeah. Just like you. They're all beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> some more than some more than others, but yeah. <laughs> yes. So oh. I leave it to you, Jim. I, I will love watching your halfling. Oh, I, I, I don't mean that in a toxic way. I mean, you know, it's quite possible. Yeah, I know, I know. I have I know two PC. daughters and tell both they're the most beautiful girl in the world and absolutely mean it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you around, guys. Yep, see yeah, see you. Right, see I'm you. gonna go. I'm gonna go anyway. But you know what's more beautiful? Um, Jimmy in a Borat thong playing <laughs> halflings with no, the webcam no. on. Just saying. No Borat. Um, <laughs> I, I think that's. I think that's worth another couple of k bits. I'm just saying. All right. Oh, is, is that what Pepper has asked for? Is some flings? Is it? Well, no. I think yeah, Pepper please. should. Um, so. <laughs> He's asked for I flings, he hasn't asked for asked uh, Jimmy to come round and nosh him off. I mean, that's <laughs> yeah. a, that's, that's, he hasn't all asked options for remain on the table, don't they? Isn't that? <laughs> oh, dear. Anyway, thanks for having me on as ever. Much love to you, Jim and PC. I'll catch up with you guys soon. Uh, I'll catch you soon, Kaz. Oh, cheers, Kaz. And, uh, yep, thank you very much, PC. <laughs> I wasn't suggesting it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, congrats, congrats to Cyber Knight who's in chat as well. Congrats to you, you know, and, and commiserations to Yak. And, and yeah, well played both, you know, in, in stark contrast to some games that we've seen. Yeah, just... no, it was a nicely coached game of Blood Bowl, wasn't it? Yeah, very good. So, um, so yeah, congrats to you guys. Cheers, everyone on YouTube for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic. <laughs>